According to the Cape Ann Chamber of Commerce and Gloucester Mayor Carolyn Kirk, shown here autographing the world's largest butter knife, the Grand Prix of Gloucester is a tremendous economic driver for the eastern Massachusetts region. But over a thousand people racing and watching can leave a mark, and after a rain-drenched 2012 edition, resident complaints forced the event to battle through a lengthy permitting and public hearing process. So of course, when race day rolls around, it's 75 degrees and sunny. Freaking New England, man. Conditions weren't just dry, they were a dust bowl, and the course layout, no, that's one of the joke maps. No, another joke map, you just can't trust these race promoters on Twitter. Let's try this again. The course layout featured a lot of straightaways, and even the tight side hill turns that have been the hallmark of the event for years felt a little bit less demanding this time around. The starting stretch at Gloucester is long, paved, and uphill. Less about winning the race to clip in, and more about sustaining power and finding gaps. That's how Laura Van Gilder of Van Dessel Mellow Mushroom, who's won like a million crits, was able to come from barely second row to second wheel out of the first bend. But it was Rafa Focus's Gabby Duran who took the whole shot and continued to power through the first corners of the course. But you'll notice, as Kona's Helen Wyman leads past this disturbingly large rock a few moments later, that things are pretty tight. Not a lot of sections to make the difference with finesse. Just fast, not particularly steep hills that leave just a handful of seconds to make a pass, as Marin Bikes' Nicole Duke can't quite do here to Cal Giants' Meredith Miller. After the leaders come into a technical section some nine deep on the first lap, it's no surprise that Wyman decides to try and break things up through the start-finish. Despite being paved, it's the longest continuous hard pedaling on the course. But Cal Giants' L. Anderson showed no hesitation getting to the front of the chase to keep the gap small. The reform group bunched up even more tightly behind a literally coasting Duke before Wyman made another surge coming out of the field and onto the stairs. But even after Duran joined her, it was Anderson once again who came forward to close the gap, reeling in the escape by the second corner on the course. Prior to this point, the Cal Giant rider had seemed content to let others do the work, but after a quick check over her shoulder, she put out a concerted effort through a series of straightaways and maybe pulled a bit of a John Page, closing down Wyman over the stairs. Regardless of the cause, it wasn't an especially graceful obstacle negotiation for the reigning Koppenberg Cross champ, and indicative, perhaps, of a bit of an off day. Anderson continued to apply pressure up front, splitting the lead group to four, and then down to two, with Optum Kelly Benefit's Crystal Anthony as the closest pursuer. But by the stairs, Anderson's teammate Miller had reeled Anthony back in, and with Bicycle Blue Book Rock Lobster's Courtney McFadden and Van Gilder catching on as the chase rode into the bell, you could tell it was pretty much down to the duo ahead. Wyman seemed to have no trouble keeping pace with Anderson on the longer pedaling stretches, but the Cal Giant rider seemed to power out just a bit of space each time the two riders negotiated a tight, dusty technical section. By the final ascent of the stairs, Anderson had a two-second advantage over Wyman, while several seconds down, her teammate Miller had attacked and distanced the rest of the chase. By the closing meters, Anderson had increased her lead and made one final surge to secure the win, while behind her, Wyman bowed to inevitability and rolled in for second. Miller, still clear of the chase, has time to salute as she cruises in for third. I'm Cosmo Catalano, and that's how the race was won.